Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Zero and welcome to another automation tutorial. Today we are talking about chunk loaders. That's right, the age old secret of Minecraft is how to keep my stuff running when I'm not around. Well, today's a big day. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. But first, I would just like to disclaimer this that there are a lot of great videos out there about chunk information. This is not gonna be one of them. This is just simply showing you how to do it. I could go on for hours and hours about chunks and loading chunks and algorithms and integers and Java to the SVE binary, but we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna simply talk about how to make things work in the game. So first, let's notice these command blocks. These command blocks have nothing to do with loading chunks. They're just here to show you that I have in fact loaded the chunk. So to start off, always active. This is our spawn chunk. As you can see, it is spamming chat. So as I'm in this chunk, obviously it is loaded. What you need to know about spawn chunks is that they are typically comprised of a 16 by 16 chunk area, which you can see I mapped out around us. Now, what is a chunk exactly? Well, a chunk is a part of Minecraft, real estate if you will, that is made up of a 16 by 16, 256 block structure. Now, those blocks can consist of many things, dirt, lava, bricks, air, clouds, just kidding, not clouds, but you get the idea. Basically, it's what makes up all of Minecraft, is chunks, lots and lots and lots of chunks. So anyway, these are our spawn chunks. Now the cool thing about spawn chunks, and what you should know right away is that if you're looking to do some very fast automation right away by creating some farms in your world, maybe an iron farm, maybe a cow farm, whatever it may be, you're gonna wanna use your spawn chunks right away. Spawn chunks never unload, they keep block updates going, redstone activated, and hostile and passive mobs spawning. Now, the difference between that and regular chunk is, well, the regular chunk doesn't do anything, you can unload it. Once you're nearby it and your render distance can take it in, yeah, of course you're going to get some mob updates in there and things are going to happen, but once you leave it, it's gone. The spawn chunk, always active, always running. Everything is 100% go time in the spawn chunk. So, I have it spamming in chat. I'm going to go ahead and just go away from here and I'm going to lower my rendering distance and you're going to see that spawn chunk in chat is still running. Down to two for the tiniest. I'll let it run there just for a couple seconds. And yes, see, as you can see, it is still there. Spawn chunk still active. So this is all great and fine and dandy and all, but we came to find out how can we load other chunks, Zero? Well, follow me. I just happen to know the way of the chunk guide. So over here, you can see, we do in fact have ourselves a hopper leading into what appears to be some sort of yellow force field from Tron. Okay. In order to get that up, you need to hold down F3 and press G, and you will get your chunk grid. Now, the chunk grid is a pretty cool trick. It's very, very helpful, especially when you're trying to do this sort of stuff. Uh, the blue is, shows the chunk that you're currently in. The red lines on the outside show the surrounding adjacent chunks around you. So this is a three by three grid. What's happening here is called a chunk stitch. Now, in order to stitch a chunk together, we take a hopper and we feed it directly in to the adjacent chunk preferably a block. It can be an air block, but this is just, you know, for illustration purposes. And what this is doing is it's trying to take an update into this block. It's basically saying, hey, I got an item. Can you take it? You're clay, so you can't talk. And I guess the hopper can't talk any of it, but eh, you get what I'm saying. This repeats over and over and over again, thus loading this chunk because this spawn chunk's always active, therefore making this chunk always active because it's actively seeking an update. So how do we use this to our benefit? Well. Behold the exploitation. We take that, what we know, and load in several different chunks in all directions. This is in fact a seven by seven grid. Now, you don't really need to make a seven by seven grid for what we're about to do. What you do need to do is make a five by five grid, which I've demonstrated in the nether brick here. So if you look around, you see a whole lot of ones and in the dead center, you see a magenta two, nice. So the magenta two represents a new spawn chunk. That's right. Because we outlined this center chunk with five chunk, a uh, five by five area of chunks, we've now created the pseudo chunk. Now, I wish I could explain to you how this works and why it works, but to be honest, I don't think I have the time, nor do I know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it has something to do with some sort of algorithm in the game that computes a certain amount of chunks loaded at any given time, makes up a spawn chunk. That's just my guess. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press this command block, set up to repeat, always active, done. I'm gonna lower my rendering distance back down to two, the tiniest, and I'm gonna run away from this chunk just to show you guys that it is in fact constantly loaded. 
So essentially what's happening here is that we are taking the spawn chunk and we are spreading it out. We are spreading it out because we are forcing updates via the hoppers. And as you can see, the spawn chunk is new spawn chunk is still loaded because it is spamming chat. So what this means? Well, now that we have this spawn chunk, we've now created our own pseudo spawn chunk, which essentially lets us have passive and hostile mobs spawning, lets us have redstone activation and block updates all at the same time in this chunk. Now I know what you're asking. Zero, what about these other chunks though? Aren't they good for something? Well, they, in fact they are. They are good for something. They can't spawn mobs, which is unfortunate because that's what, I'm, what we're all about. We're all about building farms and want to have them automated and not have to be around them all the time. These chunks can't do that. It's unfortunate, I know. But they can do some things, which is redstone activation. Obviously we have hoppers in here, so they have to be active because it wouldn't work. So redstone activation is possible. But other than that, there's not much else these chunks can do. They can't receive block updates outside of redstone. It's unfortunate. I know. But you get a pseudo spawn chunk. And if you decide you want to make this a bigger pseudo spawn chunk, all you got to do is expand the perimeter by two. So right now, it went from five to seven. So essentially what happens is, is this actually should be expanded more. But I just want you guys to focus on the nether brick to make a five by five, which is the minimum. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is the nether portal chunk loader. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go into an overworld just because I've created so many nether portals in this test world that it's really kind of messed up my system. All right, now that we're in our new creative world and basically it looks like a normal run in the middle survival world, I'm gonna go ahead and TP myself a good deal of distance away from these chunks. I'm gonna TP myself to, let's go minus 580. 500. Alright, so we should be plenty of distance out of the spawn chunks now. And we're going to go ahead and drop this right here. I'm going to put a command in here, slash say, nether loop. Set it to repeat, and always active. As you can see, now we are spamming chat with nether loop. Next thing, I'm going to go ahead and so make myself a, a nether portal. Nothing out of the ordinary, just playing survival, making another portal. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to light this portal. Hop on through. Now keep an eye on the chat because another loop will stop spamming here in just a moment. Alright, it stopped. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is throw an item right on through the portal. And as you can see, it took a moment to update. But Nether Loop is now running again. Now, what you might want to do is run right back through the portal. Do not do that. That will deactivate the chunk. What we need to do now is um, die. We gotta die. And you can do that many ways. You can hop in the lava. You get killed by gas. You can attack some pigmen. Doesn't really matter. Basically, you just gotta die. So I'm gonna do a slash kill. Respawn. And as you can see in chat, Nether Loop is still spamming because that chunk is now loaded. Now the only exception to this rule is if you log out, you will no longer have your nether loop chunk loaded. But what's going on right now is that that nether loop is in fact a spawn chunk. So we can have things running there, such as mob farms, uh, redstone activation, we can have passive and, uh, uh, passive and hostile mobs spawning within this chunk. It's really, really cool. So awesome. So awesome. So anyway guys, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. That is all I have for you guys on loading chunks. I know there's probably a couple other things out there and there's a lot more information out there. If you're looking for things like information on why chunks do what they do, there's a lot of great videos out there. I'll go ahead and link some of them in the description. Things that I found very, very informative. I wish I could get more into them because I just don't feel right talking about it because I, I'm not that well informed with it. But I would love to learn some more. So anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe you learned something. And if you like what you saw today, go ahead and press that subscribe button. And if you really liked it, there's a little bell on that subscribe button. Really, really small. Give that a press. You'll get a notification every time I upload something. Thank you guys again. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.